the Hybrid Dead. In this video, we are driving a hybrid and an electric car 75 miles up a mountain and then 75 miles back down. We're gonna find out which one costs more for our little mini road trip. The hybrid for this comparison is the legend, the icon, the Toyota Prius, in this case, the 2022 XLE Nightshade. And representing the full electric car, the 2022 Mini Cooper SC. Both of these are small, affordable city cars. They can both be had for under $30,000. Let's see which one costs less on our road trip. All right, so here is the plan. Both of these cars are completely filled up. So the Prius has a full tank of fuel and the Mini Cooper SE is sitting at 100% state of charge. Now we're going to drive straight up a mountain pretty much. So we're at about 5,000 feet above sea level here in Boulder, Colorado. We're going way up there to the Rocky Mountains to 11,000 feet above sea level. Now we're gonna turn around about 75 miles up, 75 miles down. And then we're gonna fill up the Prius back up to full using our two click method, see how much gas we use, see what the fuel economy was, and how much it cost. And then we're gonna plug the mini into our office here, see how many kilowatt hours we used on the trip and how much money in kilowatt hours we spent on the same exact route. It'll be a great test. We have an absolutely beautiful day for our test today. 62 degrees Fahrenheit, at least down here in Boulder, Colorado, along the foothills. Now, we're gonna run both of the cars in normal drive modes. Not gonna use any special eco modes, just as you might drive them on your road trip or in your day-to-day -day lives. Um, we'll see what happens. Perhaps unsurprisingly, we are using electricity like it's going out of style. So we are at 75% state of charge and we've driven 26 and a half miles. So roughly 1% state of charge per mile. And now we are entering Interstate 70 and this is just a brutal uphill climb for the next 40 or 50 miles or so before we get to the very top of the mountain. The EPA rates the Mini Cooper SE at 114 miles on a single charge. And the MSRP in this car was $37,000, Now this does apply for the full $7,500 tax credit. So that brought our end of the day total down to about $31,000 when you factor in that tax advantage. The interesting thing is that, that Prius in front of us doesn't apply for the tax incentive, but the MSRP on that Prius, $31,000. So the net cost of both of them, about $31K for us. state of charge update in the Mini Cooper SE. So we are averaging 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour and we've driven 45 miles. So that gives us a useful range of about 90 miles based on our current consumption. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is a hard test and it's been made even harder by the fact that we've had really strong gusts, probably 20, 30 mile an hour gusts. I think we may have to stop and fast charge the Mini in Frisco, Colorado, because even though it is mostly downhill back to our offices, there is of course some flat and uphill and you know, you still end up using energy. And at this rate, by the time we get to the top of the mountain, we're not gonna have enough to make it back to Boulder. Almost to the very top of the mountain, we are down to 14% state of charge, it's still climbing. Got a little butt clenchy there for a sec. 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour is what we've been averaging, which is really bad for the Mini. And we have driven nearly 70 miles, 14% state of charge. There's no way I'm gonna make it back to Boulder with 13% state of charge. I'm not even gonna make it back to Golden with 13% state of charge. So the only thing to do is to continue onward to Frisco. The car is saying we have eight miles of range. It's about 15 miles to Frisco. <laughs> Here we go, starting our long descent. So we exited the tunnel with 10% stated charge. Let's see how much energy we can put back into the pack on this eight mile downward grade. I have regen set to high. Range estimator is saying just six miles. 
we're gonna have to use gravity if we're gonna make it to the charger. <laughs> Like that, we went down that eight mile seven percent grade section, and we actually did gain some energy. So the gas meter went from six miles of estimated range to 12, and the state of charge went from 10 to 13, so roughly three percent additional state of charge down that stretch of highway. It's okay, I guess. Now we've got a little bit further to go to the Walmart where we're gonna plug into an Electrify America so we can get up and over the Rockies and back home. I should say up and over a little part of the Rockies and then down a large part of the Rockies back to the foothills. Wahoo! Good thing about driving these short range EVs is they make you very excited to see Walmarts. <laughs> 9% state of charge. I suppose it doesn't really matter which one I plug into here because there's absolutely nobody here. This of course has CCS charging and Hopefully, we can start charging. Now, I do have an Electrify America Plan Plus, which means I have a small monthly charge, but then my cost per kilowatt hour is lower than if I just swiped my credit card. And we'll look at that billing data at the very end of this video and see what that equates to. But I am going to try to charge the Mini to roughly 50, 52% state of charge, somewhere in there. I think that should be enough to get us up that 8% and then down the Rockies and then out to Boulder. That's the goal. Well, it looks like we've initiated our charging session. I'm being billed at 31 cents per kilowatt hour. 24, 25 kilowatts. Now the Mini peaks at just 50, so it's not a very fast charging EV, at least in terms of the peak kilowatt rating, but it does have a very consistent curve, so we should ramp up to near 50 and hold it there for most of the session. So I've jumped into the Prius and let's take a look at some of its data. So we've driven the same distance as the Mini, which makes sense, we've been following each other. 83 and a half miles. And then we do alternate who's leading just so there's no drafting advantage. Averaging 39.3 miles per gallon. Now let's look at this little computer next to that because it shows you some cool stuff. Average speed, 46 miles per hour. And the EV driving ratio, that tells you what percentage of time you've been running on electricity versus gasoline. So currently averaging 24 percent electricity hopefully that will get better on the way back down the mountain all right so we have been here for 17 minutes we are at 52 percent state of charge and we actually did increase our power output a little bit 47 kilowatts 50 oh we're up to 53 now that should be enough to get us back down into boulder here we have our session summary, so $4.03 is what it costs to go from about 9% to 54 by the time I hit the stop button. I kind of dozed off there for a sec. <laughs> now of course, we do have to go up that same 8 mile 7% grade that we call the Ike Gauntlet before we can, you know, make our way down the rollers into Golden, Colorado. So let's see how much power we use on this really steep climb. Starting at 50% state of charge. Almost to the top of what we call the Ike Gauntlet. Back to that 11,000 feet summit. We are at 35%, so 15% use. So we're going to go down to 34. I think we might. He's still 35. Here is the summit now. There we go, 34. So 16% used in eight miles. Now can that 34% get us at 70 miles or so back to Boulder? That's the big question. The car is saying 38 miles to empty. Can we uh, stretch that to 70? <laughs> Well, we're just coming down from the interstates. Now we've traveled, oh, well, we've actually gone, you know, near 50 miles on just, I don't know, what's that? 15% state of charge. So we started at the top of the mountain with 34%. We're down here at Golden with 19%, but I still have another 27 miles to go back to Boulder with just 19% state of charge.
Well, we did end up making it electric rain. You severely reduced 4% state of charge remaining, which is way better than I thought, although still fairly low because we only have three miles of range left according to the car. And that's good because if I showed up with like 25 or 30%, that tells me that I probably wasted money charging at the fast station, but because I arrived at, you know, 4%, I pretty much drained it all. Now we're gonna fill it up using our wall charger at the office and see how much it costs us. Now the advantage here, of course, is that charging at home is typically far, far cheaper than charging at a public DC fast charger. And that's why I like to do it here, or in this case, at the office. All right, so the Mini says we've gone 166.7 miles, and the Prius says we've gone 166.7 miles so the Prius says it's averaged 50.7 miles per gallon with an EV driving ratio of 32% electric average speed of 48 miles now we're gonna go just around the corner fill this car up using our two-click method to see how much gas we actually use we'll calculate it out and see what the cost is Okay, so just got done filling up the Prius. I used the same pump I did this morning to start the test. I use the same technique. And of course, this gas station is right around the corner from our office. So, let's do some math. Now, that fill up cost me $10.63. We used 3.221 gallons at just under $3.30 a gallon. So, 167.7 miles driven divided by 3.22 gallons, 52 miles per gallon. That is pretty amazing, 52.08. Now let's see if the electric car is going to cost less than $10.63. It's the next day, I'm all showered and cleaned up after the road trip, the vehicles are all filled up and let's see which one was more expensive over the mini road trip. Now the Prius, easy set of math here. We started full, we filled back up to full, it took 3.221 gallons at a price of $10.63. Now this was a very impressive result, we averaged 52 mpg, which I think is pretty incredible. Let's compare that $10.63 to the full electric car. Now things do get a little bit more complicated with the Mini Cooper SC. So we actually had to do two different charges to bring the Mini all the way back up to full, like we started with. Now the first charge, of course, was that Electrify America charge. We plugged in for roughly 18, 19 minutes and the station delivered 13 kilowatt hours, but of course we used a lot of energy getting up and back over the mountains back down to Boulder and I had to fill up then back at the offices and we just plugged it in on level two. It took I think four hours and 32 minutes to get from 4% all the way back to 100 and that was 31.5 kilowatt hours delivered. So you can see that charging stock was definitely necessary. So this first price, this was the Electrify America charge when you include the tax. So we spent $4.29 getting the 13 kilowatt hour charge. Now the 31 and a half kilowatt hours that I filled up with at the office, that was a lot more affordable because our uh, price per kilowatt hour is much lower at the office than it was at the Electrify America. So here at the office, we paid just over 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And to add 31 and a half kilowatt hours uh, delivered, that cost us $3.86. So the total for the Mini Cooper SE is $8.00. And 16 cents. So we can see that that is a couple dollars cheaper than the Toyota Prius. Now, a big chunk of this money, of course, did come from the EA station fill up. Um, and the EA station was a lot more expensive than what we paid at the office. So if we had a larger battery in that Mini, if we could go further on a single charge, as you might with like a Tesla, these numbers would be different and this final cost for the electric car would be lower because in theory, you wouldn't have had to stop at that Electrify America and charge up. Now, of course, if you're doing a longer road trip, you would have to stop at the public DC fast chargers. Uh, but interesting result there. So. Prius to Mini Cooper electric. The Mini Cooper was cheaper by a couple of dollars. However, we did have to do that DC fast charging station stop on the road, um, which did add some time. And if you think time is money, then maybe the Toyota Prius works out to be a little bit more affordable. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Maybe we'll redo this test with a longer range EV like a Tesla and see how this final number does change and how it would be lower if you didn't have to fast charge it. And thank you for watching TFLEV. Stay tuned for all the latest and greatest in full electric content.